when a person gets to the emergency room, how is the diagnosis established? So, it, first of all, it can be difficult to diagnose because a lot of those things that we just described, the, the increased heart rate, uh, being more short of breath, pain, those can be associated with other conditions as well. But hospitals around the country have initiatives where they're trying to make sure healthcare providers are also very aware of the signs and symptoms of sepsis. And so if there's a, an infection suspected and you start to see those those signs of that it's starting to affect the other uh, parts of the body, then we often move forward with, with the idea that it looks like sepsis we're going to go ahead and treat and then, then determine as we go what, what exactly is going on. If somebody has moderate sepsis, moderately severe, not horribly severe, not mild, uh, what is the longevity in the intensive care with fluids, antibiotics, is it three days and then you know you're going to do well, or is it two weeks and you know you're going to do well, or everybody's different? It's, it, everybody's different. It can be it, absolutely variable. Um, if, if it's caught early, uh, then hopefully it turns around fairly quickly. And the way we know that somebody is ready to leave the intensive care unit and move to a regular hospital room is usually if their breathing is under control and they're not requiring uh, assistance with that, and if we're not having to use uh, drips in the IV to help support their blood pressure.